Leck and Greg Vegan Camp, the 1st of June 2021. These uh, sweet bamboo growing everywhere and they're like bamboo shoots which uh, can be eaten raw from this type of bamboo and also steamed or boiled. And we also have the sweet bamboos growing all around here. Finger root growing here together with the chilies. And chilies climbing all around here. You have chilies everywhere around here. Passion fruit growing also nearby the chilies. Limes coming up again, but uh, they're not ready for harvesting right now. All of these are also sweet bamboo. We have the makrut lime and they're just dropping from the tree. Some people use them for paya salads or other food ingredients, but I primarily use them for cleaning stuff uh, like a shampoo or in the washing the clothes or washing the dishes. Mango season oh, and ant season also. Also mangoes on the table, ripening up. A lot of cracked mangoes. Leg is growing straw mushroom here and there under the lungan tree and doing nurseries. Money plant. This is a young pig nut. Never seen th these in real life before. They're too young, but you can actually crack them open and eat them. They're actually quite nice to eat. I haven't died of eating them yet, raw. Very funny. This is from a King Project nearby. Pineapple almost falling off the stem here. Hope it ripens up a bit more before it completely falls off. In May, we have been drinking a lot of uh, ginger tea because we have ginger also. And ginger tea with licorice root. Licorice root we don't grow, but uh, we have some suppliers former suppliers when people were allowed to travel so licorice root and ginger very nice combination and then a little bit of lime makes a very nice tea yeah and the rains have kicked in there a bit on and off I was actually a little bit surprised that there were no that that we had we, we started good with a lot of rain and then we had a period of I don't know one or two weeks without rain and it became really really dry they promised a lot of rain but it's I'm not sure anymore <laughs> a lot of discarded peanuts were thrown here like a year ago now we have new fresh peanut plants this is how I love that things grow and do its thing you just throw things around and then things pop up and the jackfruit in the background and this area near the giant bamboo actually Lek is harvesting some uh, new shoots and boiling them for, for eating they are quite nice too but these are primarily used as a building material these have been planted by themselves or something nobody planted them, these uh, beans and it's just nice to see beans popping up somewhere and nobody thought that anything would grow here because the bamboo roots are very like strong around here and they're sucking up all the energy in the water but now these beans they can grow here they actually take the nitrogen from the air so these should be nice too that they can grow here and beans are very nice to eat they have very lovely fresh beans from the garden pumpkin growing up the mango this is how longans in our garden look like. This is a nightmare for every longan grower. No profit! The entrance is still here. The chaya fence is still there. Mambu growing. And this is the new land. So all this until the end of the road, this is also Lek and Greg Vegan Camp. And Lek has been busy moving plants and planting plants. Coconut. And I've tried to plant some orange jacks. That one died. This one died, but there are 
a bit more of them here so they, I think they'll survive and all of these these are date palms but they grow from, from seeds they probably will never give fruit but maybe they will be like mother plants and then you can graft a, a female on top maybe that may be an idea I don't know if that's possible with date palms and a lot of banana plants if you want to eat banana we have banana more coconut plants so there was a chaya plant like this that had fallen you can see the, the chaya roots here so the when the storm comes and they have haven't been planted deep enough or the soil just gets loose because there's suddenly a lot of water then the chayas will fall and when that happens you can take a chaya which I have done and you can just chop it up and just plant more and all of these they will grow into insanely big plants and they even grow well in dry conditions it's completely amazing plant and food security forever young red cavendish as far as I remember it was chopped up here you can just see that the banana leaves will start growing from uh, from this part again this mango from is planted in the new land and I took it from the we throw a lot of seeds in front of our kitchen and then they start to grow and then we, we cannot have like 100 trees growing in front of our kitchen because there's not enough room so, um, so sometimes I just take some of these plants and plant them somewhere this is just a mango probably an Nam Dok Mai we have enough but uh, yeah the tree is all, always good so this is the end of the new land and you can see it from the other side the entrance is over there and then until you get to the road down there this is marking the border so in this area it's really unmaintained so some one time per year the village people are just burning all the weeds here so I'm fighting the fire here so I'm also like yeah it's not good when the fire comes because it will just like maybe spread into this area so we need to cut the grass here especially in the dry season otherwise the fire can spread and burn all all the camp down so fighting fire to the south or the south east and in the east we they started actually to cut the grass more and more so they're not spraying as much but like one time a year I think they will spray with some uh, fungicide not fungicide but um, not pesticide fungicide and herbicide primarily they spray herbicides to kill the weeds so herbicide and also they just sprayed to the north also uh, herbicide and also one time per year or so they're cutting it but uh, I'll show you how that looks you can see everything is green if it looks like this if you go somewhere and it looks like this this is how it should look in the wet season it should be all green if not either they are like hard hard like maintaining it like in their houses if you go to a typical Thai house everything is just cleared all the weeds are cleared and there's only hard soil and here I can just stand and I'm just bouncing a little because the whole um, th this whole area is very like soft because we are harvesting a lot of water mosquitoes man these are they're dragons they just need to need to behave and we're harvesting a lot of water by having some kind of vegetation. If you don't have vegetation, the, the, so the, the water will either just drift by, just like flow over the, the soil, or it will just stay on top and then when the sun hits, it will just evaporate. The, the concept here is that it rains and then there's full sun, you know. So if, if the rain is not absorbed in the soil, then it will evaporate or go somewhere else or something something like that so if you have a lot of green stuff around um, if it's weeds or something some other vegetation that provides shade then yes there will be a lot of water in the in the soil and also this will provide water for throughout the whole year so that's how you can grow things if you if you just know how to like keep the land
these are the, the dog farts so you can take the shoots and eat them with your dish or rice or you can just take and you eat them raw with your rice or you can also eat them they have like a pungent taste I like some pungent taste it's a little bit bitter and yeah not overly bitter not overly bitter like like the like the macroot lime can be so if you put a macroot lime that it may be a little bit too mature into your papaya salad it will just get super bitter but in some places also in south they have like and north like in the areas remote areas of Thailand they just love bitter things and I'm not I can I like a little bit like hint of bitter but like overly bitter like Armin bitter salads in Switzerland <laughs> then it's just no 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 <laughs> it's not me I cannot eat that it's not I, I believe that overly bitter stuff is like pretty much poison for the body I mean if you eat something and it's bitter and you want to throw up it doesn't really make sense because it's your body is telling you hey man don't eat this it's not good for you so the four four guardians in each area has been reduced to two guardians and now I'm trying to plant I planted a, a avocado again here between these guardians let's see if it survives now is a much better time to plant the avocado because the rain season is here and there should come a lot more rain before it becomes completely dry let's see what happens exciting times all the time exciting times according to the reports we have zero covid in the whole province of lampoon that is uh, the province where lee is and lekking Greg vegan camp is and you can see the air is very nice we can see the mountains it's so good small red cavendish a little bit bigger red cavendish like planted something or standard guainamoa the apple banana and I actually planted a durian here it's because I found when uh, trying to dig down some of these okay let me start start over this was a giant banana growing really well but then the storm just <laughs> there was so much water and it this area was so wet that the giant banana just fell and the roots came up so I needed to plant dig deeper and plant these bananas down and this is one that I need to move but I want it to grow a little bit more before I move it and dig it down and and I found that there's so much water here and I know that like the avocado I'm growing here and a um, durian I'm trying to grow here and um, they will maybe they love water so maybe if they can grow here they will just be able to suck up all the water and actually grow well because it's hard to grow anything in this dry area of Lekking Greg Vegan Camp and in Lee Lampoon and I know they, these were planted very well close together but I don't really care maybe they can grow together or maybe one will survive and the other will die I, it's not doesn't really matter but it's just experiment to see if they can grow in the protection of bananas where there already is a lot of um, moisture around here also this is um, a concept uh, of digging down the uh, banana and also just putting these are cassava this uh, I put down these as just as markers so I put them down in the opposite way of their growth so they shouldn't grow they're very hard to kill so so these are just markers, they, they will not, not grow cassava here. If cassava grows here, they will just uh, put roots inside and inhibit the growth of everything else. It's not so good. And this area, as I talked before, they are like burning it. So if you can imagine if there's like a huge fire and all these bamboo is catching fire and I have giant bananas here catching fire, it's not fun. Also very nice, interesting plant with spikes I don't know what it is but leg nose and here we have the red Cavendish I moved maybe a year ago so this was growing well and stuff and then it fell down the roots came up and I tried to save it and put it up again but it it died it seems it, it's pretty much dead but the lucky thing is that the root system down there is still working so we it, it gave two new children and let's see if they will grow and make happy bananas around here
Leg is testing out her new uh, coffee shop. There was some teak wood from the old um, rice storage at mom's house and now the teak wood is here and they made a new nice area. You can do a lot of yoga there and stuff. But it's also nice because uh, the scooters can be parked there. The scooters don't need to go all around and into the house. Just scooters nearby the entrance and not making noise and smell around the kitchen and stuff. So that's nice. And also these are the cashew nuts. Cashew nut nursery. Looks very nice. Can you spot the moon? That's what I'm doing every day, just looking at the sky and see if I can spot the moon. This is how it looks when a mango cracks and drops within a bag. Here I have a border also to like help the neighbor and also to say okay this I will manage the cutting of the weeds at the border so if they decide to spray they will hopefully not spray around here near the border where we're growing bananas and stuff like that and yeah it's also nice to have um, where you can walk around the border and manage the border of the land the thing about long grass is it's very nice and stuff but they're like bugs and worms with itchy and when you like to go around like me or like without much clothes on much protection and shorts then it's just not nice to go around with the high grass and high weeds unless you have big rubber boots on and, and protection and long pants it's really up to the individual to decide how you want to grow your things but yeah it's very easy to just to let everything just let it go with the flow but it's just not so easy if you want to manage and grow the things you want to grow so if you want to grow a lot of food you need to manage it a little bit Otherwise, it will just some things will not grow. Maybe in 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 500 million years, it will grow a lot of fruit and stuff. But if you're the average human only lives around the 80, 90 years, then it's uh, you cannot wait that long. And we are so many humans on the planet that in the past you didn't really need to manage nature because you're like. 10 humans and you had like 5,000 hectares of land where there were all kinds of trees, bananas, fruits and all kinds of stuff but that's not, you don't have 5,000 hectares of land where you can just decide and pick the food you want. So now you have like limited land where you need to optimize a little bit. This is a cassava. It spreads out a new string of a branch and then it gets so heavy that it's at some point it will just snap. When it snaps, it will just fall down somewhere on the on ground and it will just root. It will just root there where it snaps. But what I usually do is like I also use these as supporting, um, supporting uh, poles or um, markers. So you can just also just cut them and then just plant them. As long if you just cut this piece and just take it and put it in the soil like that it will just grow again it's completely insane with these cats are also very good security plant food I just planted a banana over there and I when I was digging I also found a root and I dug it up the roots are not tasty right now so I don't know if they're very old or very young they probably they're very old so very old they're not really tasty you can still eat them probably but they're not very tasty they're like hard not creamy and not they don't have much flavor and taste they're just very like bland and like like watery and it's not a nice experience and and, and hard not soft and creamy yeah. we need to move when we are on the move the mosquitoes cannot catch us these flowers smell so good these white flowers they're just dropping all over the place This is just like a, like an island in on Hawaii where you have flowers everywhere and just uh, 
singing all day long and stuff and dancing. The temple dog, Midam, already being treated for fleas. But um, he's staying here most nights now. I'm not sure why. He's looking for a home. And we, we, we cannot just throw him out, can we? Because in the temple have a lot of dogs. Love. And then oh, the owner, old man, he died. And he don't know where he stay. And he wants home. He wants love. <laughs> he wants a home and he wants love. Yeah, so the only problem with me, Dam, is that Hima, the dog that was sheltered here, that is still sheltered here, well, Lek is actually Hima's mother, that's what people say. Hima doesn't like the new puppy because Hima was used to get all the attention. But now there's a new puppy running around, Hima doesn't like. But yeah, now it's much easier to go the rounds of the mangoes. You can see the state of the mango without touching them or opening the bags. So you can inspect it from within the oh there's something up there. Should go down there. This. Yeah, much easier to inspect and see what's going on. Just go these rounds each morning and see if there are any tree dropped mangoes. Maybe pick some of the the ones that are bagged with the paper bags and make them ripe. So we don't have 500 kilos of mangoes ripening up at the same time. Mango. Medium. Cracked mango. Compost. When the, the, this tip of the mango is getting yellow, this is normally a, a sign that you can pick the mango. Also you can see the small dark spots also a sign that uh, this is almost ready. But I actually want to leave them as long as possible. The, the problem is also that in the middle, in the center, it's very, very ripe. And on the outside, it's not. So it's very crunchy on the outside and very soft. Sometimes it's even overripe in the middle, which is a, a very strange thing. If you know anything about the, the concept of the mango becoming overripe in the middle and, and crunchy and unripe outside, let me know in the comments below. The rice straw hill that is not, it's almost no hill anymore. Crack mango. Some of these cracked mangoes are actually used in the smoothies instead of lime to make the smoothie a bit sour. Pumpkin invading. The rice straw, like some mushrooms growing. When there's fungi, around in your garden it's very good and very healthy and like plants love to grow where there's fungi and the microbiome in the soil is very nice there there's so much activity there and the the sugars from the plants go into the bacteria and the bacteria poop and give nutrition for the plants it's just a very nice nice concept Jackfruit harvest or jackfruit, a lot of them cracked on the tree and then they don't really ripen up well. So when it's cracked, it might be edible anyway. I think there's one that is not cracked, it's very you can you can see how soft it is. Normally when you the jackfruit is not ripe, you can you cannot press it. This is just look look how soft it is. Just like moving. I can I can almost open it with my hands. I need to open this and eat it today, otherwise it will go bad. Harvest from yesterday, a lot of cracked ones, and I even open up a couple of ones over there and just compost just to try to eat some of them, but they were not tasty. Otherwise you can use the seeds inside and, and boil them or steam them. It's like a chestnut thing, very chestnutty flavor. It's quite nice. But yeah, it's a seed. Should we eat seeds? 
Nobody knows. The old area with the straw, also growing more pumpkin. And I think this is also a bean. I was hoping it was a cucumber, but I don't think it's a cucumber. I also tried to plant some cucumbers, but I think they all, they didn't germinate, unfortunately. And to the north, you can see that there is uh, the neighboring area where they are using herbicide for the weeds. You can see it's whittling. It's not green anymore, it's brownish, yellowish. That's how it looks when herbicides are being used. Bean plants also here near the north side of the, the camp. And these will provide very nice, tasty beans, probably November, December. Bees collecting pollen, food for the bees from the flowers of the banana flower. And then a lot of food afterwards for us humans, the human animal. Yeah, the weeds are competing a lot with these bean plants. I'm just taking some of these weeds around and just putting around the, the bean plants, mulching and making sure that nobody steps on or cuts the bean plants. I planted this a couple of days ago. This, this was cut a couple of days ago and now it's already growing. Very fast growing when they're big and nice. The banana plants are really growing really fast and they have the right conditions in the soil. Yesterday I gave this uh, bean some cover protection with some uh, banana leaves and some other mulch. Also a red cavendish. When I was mulching, I, I, I did it with my bare hands and I almost grabbed a black scorpion like this, but was lucky enough not to grab it with my bare hands. It stinks, just like a wasp. The border here, also cutting the grass, just to let the neighbor know that I am taking care of this, so there is not, they're not spraying on, on, on the border. So when I cut the grass here, they will not spray. There will be less herbicide on, on, on our land, which is very nice. So I, I decided just to manage the borders. So we will get less fire, less herbicide, yeah, less of everything. You can see a very big difference of, of the land that is here and here on the northern border. Just found this on the ground, just took my teeth into it to peel it and it's actually tasty. I'll actually eat some of it. Not this part, but this part is quite tasty. Breakfast secured. You know jackfruits composting. Rambutan. Look at these uh, leaves. The young leaves are red. Bordeaux. Bordeaux. And here in the middle of the sweet bamboo forest and that I showed you in the beginning, I just forgot to show you that there is a beehive there. So the beehive, there was a beehive before in the longan tree nearby, but now there is a beehive here. And the other dill thing plant herb died. So leg is propagating more of these. It's so very nice. These for the cashew, cashew cheesecake. <laughs> Cheesecake, <laughs> cashew, cashew cream cheese. Wow, yes, it's the good stuff, man. And you can see the peppers. This is a green, this is a pepper, right? When they're ripe, they become red like this. And then when they dry, they become black. So black pepper, when it's fresh, it's green. I have upgraded the area in the on the house terrace thing where I have a large mosquito net. It's very nice to have an area where I can be mosquito free with everything I need in there and I can even sit on the floor with, with the mosquito net and do my uh, electric projects and fix some uh, electric units and other stuff and play around. That's very nice. Me damn you don't know how to open this door. Only him knows. Leg smother harvesting sweet bamboo shoot. Very angry at me. With me.
when it's dry, the 40 volt lawnmower does a great job here. When it uh, gets a bit more heavy weeds and rainy, then the Honda GX35 does a great job with the weed whacker. This is just a metal blade that we sharpen ourselves. It's a dangerous tool. And after the garden, there's a new shipment of durian. They have chenni, they have ganyao. A cute little chenni directly from Chantaburi. Chantaburi. This is our montong. And this one is we call ganyao. This is ganyao. You have your magic stick? Yes. And in Yangmisu. This is not ready yet. And also that the um, is too a little bit too young. Young. And it the uh, Good one, they have like a crack, yeah. not crack, not but, crack, almost, but almost the, the spikes are far away from each other. Yes, but I'm not sure in this time is Gan Yao is baby too, it's a little bit young. Mm -hmm. We need to wait, maybe. Yeah, we need to wait. Maybe uh, this one is uh, almost this one is tomorrow can eat. Okay, this one. We have the new yeah. durian expert. She can also cut durian for this 10 baht. One for two days. <laughs> this one almost ready. Mm, home? Home. Home, home from uh, another type. Mm -hmm. It's not Kanyang. From Montong. From Montong and Chani. Yes, Chani is ready in, uh, in the truck. And this one is. Um, for, can I mean, for, wait. Get ready, yeah. แต่กินเอาอ่ะกันอย่าพี่ไปวางไว้ไหนนะพี่มาวางให้พี่ On the right hand side I have the temple. This will become, this land just to the left here, will become cornfield. And this on the right hand side, this will become cassava field. This is just cassava for flour or something. And this where the new land starts. And in the end of this road there is the entrance. And you can see some of the new planted date palms. This is galanga root growing and we have a nice little lemon tree there or not lemon, lime sorry. Custard apple, Sim similar to custard apple here and similar to custard apple there and over there and the durian and a magnificent tree and the temple over there. Back home a few minutes after I arrived, they started to plow the soil, turn the soil. The guy who's taking care of this land, he cut the, cut the weeds with the weed whacker or just weed cutter. And, and then they turn the soil, then they will probably uh, put some herbicide on so the weeds don't grow. And then they will plant some, some corn. It's not sweet corn, it's just uh, hard corn for animal fodder. So it's not even for, this is not going to grow any human food. This is the total destruction of land. This is how it looks like. Modern agriculture. And me dumb, still here. Pai what, my? My pai what? Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Yeah. You're a good boy. Take care, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I never experienced a dog following me like this before. Crazy. <laughs>